the next thing that we're going to take a look at is going to be the Blairbox devices. So we have actually, we got a variety of different the devices from Blairbox here in the office. Um, and we are going to be taking a look at two different devices. We're going to be taking a look at the, um, let me just open up because they have, um, they have a web user interface and we're also going to open up the uh, instructional manuals as well. So Blaybox API documentation, uh, and then I have two devices here. So one is the air sensor quality, and the other one is going to be a little switch or a, a relay button that we have here. So mm, the Blaybox, I would say, devices, uh, they, they, you know, if, if you're not familiar with the devices, you know, we could go Blaybox air quality sensor. They, they 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 make variety of different devices for you know home automation, you know from sensors to relay switches. Uh, you know they have the whole the whole range of the products they have. And uh, the, the device that I have here is this uh, the the air sensor quality. Um, and I would say the Playbox API is very very well documented. The whole process of integration I would say is very easy because you know. Um, there's no a ton of instructional manuals and everything. They have everything is written down very clearly and very easy to understand. Uh, and one thing to note here is that also this API that we're going to be using for Playbox, we are basically connecting directly to the device. So we are communicating directly to the IP. Uh, as in, if we are looking at the Sensible device later on, we're not going to be correct connecting directly to the, to the IP of the device. We're going to back. We're going to be connecting via their cloud. So this is the two the two differences that we have between these two APIs. So the one API is basically communication directly via IP, and then the other one is going to be via their cloud. So for the air sensor, you would just go. You have they have their you know their their technical API uh, web page, and here you can see the list of basically all the devices that that you know can can be integrated into third party APIs. And you would just you would just check the um, version of your current device and you can select it here from the list and the api documentation will open uh, and you can see everything is clear you know you can see which commands are going to be used and a typical response that we can expect from the device so um, i would say the whole the whole user interface the whole you know connectivity and the way we, we can be communicating between the device is extremely easy, especially for someone that maybe, I don't know, has zero experience with third-party uh, integration. Um, so one thing we need to do is, the first thing we are gonna be, I'm gonna create a new folder here. Let's call it Blade Box. And the first device is gonna be our air sensor. So I just added an, a new HTTP driver in. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I need to, like I said, since we're connecting directly via to the device, I can refresh the, the air quality here. Um, and since we're connecting directly, I am going to just copy the IP address of the device and I'm going to paste it here under the um, under the API or the host URL, basically. And, then, and I'm going to click OK uh, or connect, basically. And then the next thing we need to do, of course, like we do with any third party device, we need to look at the instructional manual. So we can see uh, at the top of the of the top of the API, we can run this info command, which is going to basically just provide us with all the basic information about the server. So my device name, product, what it is, you know, what type is it or what type it is, the IPs and so on. So this is one thing that we can add. Uh, but I mean, I'm not too interested in the IP IPs and everything. More uh, the only the the thing that I'm interested in is the state of the air quality. Of course, that's why the device is here. So as you can see here, we have a get command which has a you know a command is state, and this is the response. And you can see that we have three different uh, particles or PM uh, levels here that the sensor is returning. So one thing we need to do, we need to go, okay, this is a get command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new command. And let's say, let's call it, I don't know, info. Or what is it? State. Okay, let's call it state. So it's the same. So state. And one thing I need to do, okay, I need to check, check the type. And we can see, okay, this is a get. And the command is state. As you can see, slash state. So I can copy the whole thing. And I'm going to paste it here under the command. 
of course, one thing to know here is that IP is all was all okay. This is a sample IP from the website, but the IP has already been added here. So I don't need if I add it here again, the command is not going to go through. Uh, one important thing also to note here is that if I put a slash at the end of the URL, right, then I cannot use it here again. So if I use it here again, the command will be double slashes basically. So um, I usually, usually the way I go, I would, I would go like the manual suggests, and the manual suggests that the, the the state command is slash state. So what I would do is I would remove the slash here at the end. So now I just have the IP address, and then I have the slash state. And if everything goes correctly, if I send the command. We didn't get any error messages. And if I go to values, we can see that the command code is OK. And we did we did, in fact, receive a response from the device, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And the way we can now analyze this data and parse the information out, um, I'm going to copy the whole thing, select it, and I'm going to copy it. And we are going to go to our trusted JSON online editor. So this is a online tool that we are using here um, just because it will allow us to clearly uh, show the response, right? Because this is the response. If I paste the response in, this is it. You know, it's you can read it, but it's not, you know, it's not too easy to read. Um, but if we go to this tree view here, we can now see that everything is nicely uh, put in their own arrays. All the values are visible. So now it's going to be very easy for us to um, to read these values basically and you know um, parse the data out because um, the, the the values that we want are going to be of course this PM levels so if we go here um, this this is the data that we want we, we want to know the particle um, you know measurements for uh, the three particles so the PM1 PM2.5 and PM10 is just the different sizes of particles that the device is uh, measuring and we want to send this information to BOS. We want to display this in our client application. So what we do is, of course, we need to parse this data out. Uh, and the way we parse it, we, we check, you know, what type of value it is. In this case, I'm just going to, if this is, I'm going to add a double variant. And uh, this is a double uh, variable parser, basically. And we're going to name it PM1 for the PM1 values. And under token name, this is where we're going to be start. We, we're going to be adding uh, the, our, our parser, basically. So we, we're going to be taking out the information from the response. So to do this, we can go here. And if I'm, if I'm looking at PM1, the way I usually go, I, I would close the tab just so I know what's the parent, basically, of the, the value. So here we can sensor and we have air. OK, so we have air and then we have sensor. So we're going to go air dot sensor. We need to put the dots in, so we are basically going into this, you know, their their own specific values or the the children arrays. Uh, here we can see the sensors. So currently we are in the the sensor area, and you can see that the sensor has three different arrays, and you can see this by this square bracket here. And we're gonna tell now BOS which array we are accessing. So we're yeah. gonna put the square bracket. And since we are looking at the PM1 value, we're going to go to the array number zero. So zero, and I'm going to close this bracket. And now we are looking at the value. So we need to put the array zero dot value if we want to receive, let's say, number one, right? So array, sensor, zero, and then value, and click OK. And if it's correct, if I send the command again, if I go to the, uh, no, I think I put the oh, air quality. So we have to stay, oh, just one second. So we have air sensor, air sensors. Ah, yeah, OK. <laughs> there was a typo there. I put sensor, but I need to put sensors, yeah. So everything is uh, case sensitive, and each word needs to be exactly correct um, to get the response. So. Let's say that was intentional, <laughs> and now we can see why we didn't receive the value. We need to put the 
strings here or the, the, the values exactly the same way as you have them here in the API. Otherwise, you know, if you're looking at sensor, we're not going to receive any values. And now you can see the PM value is one. And now we can, we can have it here displayed here. We can change the template for it. I think I have the template for the PM, uh, which is, is going to be the measurement as well. So micrograms per um, cubic meter. And now we have the value in. And now that we have the PM1, uh, the easiest way to use it for the PM 2.5 and 10 is, of course, just to make a copy of the PM, rename it, let's say 2.5, and this one could be 10, PM 10. And the only thing, of course, we need to change is we need to go to a different array. So instead of, you know, zero, you go to one. So we are getting the data from the second array. And then for the third array, we go, of course, to PM 10 and change the value here to 2. And now if I run the command again, we can see that the PM1, PM2.5, and PM10 um, are now filled out. Unfor unfortunately, they're all <laughs> one. Uh, you know, micrograms, so the values are exactly the same. That, that's why I had to double check why is it all one. But the values on the sensor are all the same, so we get the same value here. But you get the idea on, you know, how we can get the, the information from this third-party device. Um, and as it is for all of the devices, uh, the manual and a little bit of knowledge of how to read the responses is going to be the key for integrating you know new devices into BOS. So this will be for the uh, the the air sensor quality. You know it has you know different um it has different function if we want so some extended information here as well with some you know um there's some time how it's been running you know and some I think we can also change the name if you want so but just uh so we're not going to be too long uh, I'm just going to go to the next device that we have. Uh, the next device from Blaybox that we're going to be showing here is going to be the, I think it's the Switchbox, Switchbox, this one. Yeah, so the Switchbox is just a, you know, a simple relay. It just turns the device on and off, basically. So you can see Switchbox here. You turn it on. If you have something plugged in, the device turns on and off, in, in, you know, uh, the way you click it, basically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Blaybox and I'm going to add a new driver. I go switch box box okay first thing of course like we need to do like like with the air sensor i'm going to copy the ip address of the device under the host url copy it here it's going to go slash like we did before and if we go to the manual of device we can see control and state you can see they have everything nicely into you know this um drop down option so you can see the device state and controlling the device basically so to get the current status of the device we're going to be sending out slash state again here so add a command state it's another get command so go here slash state and if i run the uh, command here we can hopefully see yeah we got a response okay and here we can see that we have one relay and the current status is number one, which means number one, which means that this is turned on. And if I now, if I turn this off, if I run this command again, the state is going to be zero. So now you can see we we already have feedback from the device. Uh, one thing, okay, before I continue, one thing for the air sensor, um, if you want to constantly receive data from the from this device, you know, if you want to send out data, um, you know, uh, so you can get air quality live, you can always enable this send cyclical function. So this send cyclical function has a delay of uh, five minutes, and every five minutes, BOS is going to send this state command. So send me the current status every five minutes. So every five minutes, you can have updates on the current um, status, basically of the of the air quality. This is just one thing that I forgot to mention earlier. This is, of course, useful for these types of devices where you're constantly measuring or checking the current value. Uh, so for the switch box, now we get feedback. But if we go to the manual, 
we can see that we can also manually change the state of the device. In this case, we are using the post command. So post command is here, we can see, and now we can we, we can see that uh, we are using the same, um, same command. So let's say uh, on, we're using still backslash uh, state like we did with the 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 gate but instead of instead of the get uh, method type we're going to switch this to post uh, but when we switch to post we need to now tell the api what we're sending you know what are what are we posting what are we changing but then again this comes back to the manual and we can see that the post data for the state is here so this is the the code that we need to send basically so i'm going to copy it here go to my post data and paste it here and now you can see that this is the the response if you remember earlier so uh, we have the relays the the value of the relay and what's the current status right so by sending out one we're basically turning on this device which is perfect for our on command so now if i use the state if i go to my box currently you can see it's off but if i send this command i can hear it switching on and if i go to the web user interface you can see the device is now turned on and you can do like we did before, we can duplicate this, change this to off. And of course, just change the relay state here. So change the relay state from one to zero. And now if I run this command, I can hear it clicking. The relay has been turned off, right? So again, the whole process with when it comes with Blaybox is extremely easy, extremely fast. You know, the commands are very clear, very easy to understand. And the whole integration process is fairly simple, I would say. Um, and, you know, if, if if we had uh, currently, I'm just I'm turning on a small LED, nothing special. You can always measure consumption in as well. So if we go to the, the manual of the device, there is an extended device state where we can see that we have power consumption um, here as well. So power consumption, and here is the value. So if we want, we can also, you know, add this command in, let's say, assumption, it's a get command. We're just gonna remove the IP again. So we get state extended. If I send this now, uh, now this command, uh, we should be okay. We got the response, and now we can see that we we got the power consumption values in, in as well. And you know, we can, I can, I can just show you. We can parse this out, and you know, can use it. But the since I don't have anything too you know interesting plugged in, the power consumption is going to be zero. So you know, but the same principle would apply for the parsing data. We would need to go to the relays. Um, oh no, this is so we need to go to power measurement, power consumption zero and then the value and we can parse the data out uh, but I'll, I'll show you a little bit more on how the um, json online editor tool uh, works with the the uh, the sensible as well so uh, there's no need for additional you know data so yeah okay so we have the two devices added in they should be i think okay let me just quickly browse through if there's some questions is the state getting updated as well? Yeah, the state is uh, the status would be updated here on this one. And then, of course, you can um, not to go too far. You can then use a program task where you know where you can ask if this state has been changed. Then play around with these two as well. So um, there is you no know, not directly because we're we're here we are posting the, this data, so this value will not be changed. But you can have this state option, uh, and then you can add a program task. Um, you know, we can add a program task here where you can use this state as a trigger. Um, and then when it's uh, when the value is zero, then turn this one and then turn that one. So um, you can you can do this with the the program tasks and have this uh, option also available.